Hello, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello, hi. Um, I know that uh, in the video I did yesterday that I said I was going to do this video the same day, remake it, because I uh, had computer issues, but that didn't happen, so today is the day. <coughs> you will need to get your authorized version of the scriptures the King James Scriptures, the True and Real Scriptures. Today we are going to be talking about consequences, recompense, that sort of thing. But uh, before we do that, <clears throat> we have to address the issue of eternal security. And this is specifically for the Church of the Living God. Okay? If you come to the Lord Jesus Christ as a broken, contrite sinner, know that, knowing that you ain't no good, that you cannot save yourself, you come to the Lord in that condition, and you believe on Him, that he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that the blood that he shed on that cross cleanses you from all sin. Okay? Very quickly on that, for the, this is for the church of the living God. Okay? 1 John chapter 1, <clears throat> 1 John chapter 1. Verses 8 on to verse 10. 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 on to verse 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And look at verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. Okay? If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what he did for you on the cross, you come to him as a broken, contrite sinner, and you call upon the name of the Lord. He will save you. If you come to him broken and contrite, not merely sorry, for what you have done, but more rather, that you are sorry, that you have trespassed, sinned against God. It's not just that you're sorry for the actions or the thoughts that you took, no. It's a godly sorrow that you have offended, sinned against God himself, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You come to him broken. And that brokenness is of your self-righteousness, of your pride. That is what you are repenting of. That is what you are turning away from, your self-righteousness. Okay? And you come to him, the greater. Lord, I deserve to go to hell. I'm, I can't, I can't save myself, Lord. You died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, for me. Lord, I 
believe your word. The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And I believe on you, Lord. I trust on you that you have paid my debt that I cannot pay. I trust on you, Lord. And you call on him. Please, Lord Jesus Christ, save me. And that alone, calling upon the name of the Lord, like I have said to you many times, is the ultimate shoe of humility. The lesser is calling upon the greater. <clears throat> That's why so many people have a problem with that. Because it is exactly that, the ultimate shoe of humility. And once you are saved, you are sealed until the day of redemption. You are given the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because you are saved by grace, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You are sealed. And being sealed, that means you are eternally secure. We're talking about this before we get into the majority of the scriptures that deal with consequences, recompense. Because I know for certain that there are several of you out there of the church of the living God, even, who struggle with eternal security and doubt whether or not you are eternally secure. <clears throat> and in correspondence and within conversation with a lot of people, and there, there have actually been quite a few people I have spake with about this, <clears throat> It usually comes back to one thing. And what might that be? How could I, if I were truly saved, if I were eternally secure, how could I have done such things? How could I be saved and eternally secure and let that profanity come out of my mouth? How could I be saved and eternally secure and put wicked things before mine eyes? Said things, thought things, done things, gone places I shouldn't have. That's what it is, isn't it? That's what it is. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures to the book of John, okay? This is, um, we got a lot of scriptures we're gonna go through today. But we have to address this first, because like I said, I know for certain that there are many of you out there that struggle with this. Like I said, <coughs> it always finds its way back to that very issue. How could I be saved? How could I be eternally secure if I do, if I sin, if I do these things, if I mess up, if I be as the world? How could I be saved? How could I be eternally secure? How, oh, right? That's what it is. Let, let me say something that's going to stomp your toes a little bit. Okay, because you need to hear this. When you think about it, stop and think about it. The scriptures tell us, and we're going to look at a, a few of these. The scriptures tell us, if you are truly saved and born again, you are sealed until the day of redemption. That's in Ephesians chapter 1. Go find that. You ought to know that by heart. Okay? But the scriptures tell us that we are eternally secure today in this dispensation. Okay? 
We have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within us. Okay? Okay? And that means that we're going to heaven, whether you like it or not. And you see, when you start having that rationale in your head of how could, uh, how could I be a saved man or woman? How could I be eternally secure if I think these things, if I do these things, if I put wicked things before my eyes? Look at me. You know what that is? That's pride, my friend. What? What do you mean? Think by what? What you too bad that the Lord can't uh, keep His word that He has given you in the Scriptures? Are you that bad? Oh, you must be the exception to the rule, huh? Huh? Well, you the exception, right? That's pride, my friend. That's pride. Thinking that you're so bad that even though we have the promises given to us in the authorized version of the scriptures, even though we have these promises, they don't apply to you. And I am addressing the church of the living God. That's pride. You might not have heard that before. And you might not want to hear that. And with those I have spake with, who, where this thing comes up, I have never bluntly said that to them. But I'm saying it now. Let me put it to you in this perspective. Jeffrey Dahmer is in heaven. Well, you think you're uh, worse than he is, right? That's insignificant. And it's nothing but pride. And you need to repent of that. And take God at his word. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Now, the thing to note about in here in John chapter 6, this is before the crucifixion. They were still under the law, okay? But, but, what we are going to be looking at here does cross the dispensational line into this dispensation, okay? Because once you are truly saved and born again, you're sealed and you're going to heaven, whether you like it or not. Even when you get a little full of yourself, thinking that, oh, I'm so bad that not even the Lord Jesus Christ can save me. Or has saved me. Right? Right? John chapter 6. Verses 35 on to verse 40. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father hath given me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, are you looking at that? I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. 
And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. What's important to note about verse 40 is you and I, Today, we don't see the Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, right? But obviously, okay? Verse 40 is signifying the dispensational difference. But, and believeth on him. You see? John chapter 10. John chapter 10 now is very significant because... Because the Lord makes the very first, um, in the gospel accounts, makes a reference to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. That's, the very, uh, that's what's very significant about uh, John chapter 10. But we're going to be reading in John chapter 10, verses 25 on to verse 30. Okay? <clears throat> John chapter 25 uh, John, excuse me, John chapter 10, verses 25 on to verse 30, okay? We have to go through this first, okay? We have to, because there are those out there who are going to say, once we get into the scriptures concerning consequences, they're going to be saying things like, oh, you're saying they can lose their salvation. No. No. There are a lot of other things you can lose. There are a lot of consequences that can come to you for dabbling in sin. And there are also other recompenses that can be done for you, done, done onto you for adhering to the scriptures. It works both ways, see. So <clears throat> John chapter 10, verses 25 on to verse 30. Jesus answered them. Okay, they said, um, well, we'll read uh, verse 24. We've read these before, but we have to address this first. So bear with me. Then came the Jews. We're reading 24 on the verse 30 now. <laughs> then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall, ne and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. Referring to the soul of the Godhead. Okay? My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Right here. I am my Father are one in essence. No. I and my Father are one in divine nature. No. I and my Father are one. And you see that the Jews took up stones to cast at him kill him because he just told them that he is the father and uh, very quickly on that <clears throat> go to John chapter 8 verses 23 on to verse 24 come on 
John chapter 8, verses 23 unto verse 24. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. By the way, what, what Jesus are you believing on? One of three persons? No, 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 no. Uh, if you're confused about that, the Satanic Blasphemous Trinity, um, check out the playlist on the channel, uh, Jesus is God the Father, especially the very first video in that done by um, our beloved brother Aaron Deeren, um, which is an absolute wonderful video, sermon, on the Godhead. If you have any questions about the Godhead, one God consisting of spirit, soul, and body. But he says right here, For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Jesus is not one of three gods, three divine persons. No, one God, Jesus Christ. God the Father. <clears throat> there may be some of you out there who may be struggling with that because you believe in the second person of the Satanic Babylonian Trinity, which I can only imagine would be a stumbling block. Do you get it? Unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, ye shall die in your sins. And there are those out there who say, oh, you're adding to the gospel. No, <laughs> no, no, you wicked Trinitarians. You're the ones doing that. But now, okay, now, go to Romans chapter 8, okay? Romans chapter 8, <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, Church of the Living God, how, how, how could that be saved and eternally secure? How could that be? And I still do these things, and I still think these things. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 on to verse 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What's going to separate us from the love of Christ? One of you brainiacs out there might say, well, uh, um, <clears throat> sin is not mentioned in there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go to now 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. We are not going to be looking in Ephesians chapter 1. Okay. Because you ought to know that by heart by now. Okay. We may do it for some of you babes in Christ out there, but you ought to know this and that by heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 
or 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 on to verse 22. Okay? 20 on to verse 22 in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ, now he which establisheth us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us, is God, who hath also sealed us, and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Okay? And now, 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 5 verses 17 on to verse 21. Go there. Come on. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, God was in Christ. God the Father, the soul of the Godhead. Jesus Christ is God the Father, okay? To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. See, in him. God's righteousness. Okay? Now see where he says in here, in verse 19, not imputing their trespasses onto them, that, hello, means eternally, salvifically. Do, do you, do you look, look at the, don't look at me, look at the verse. Look at the verse, okay? To wit, God, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Not imputing their trespasses onto them. Okay? Sin is not going to keep you out of heaven. Okay? If you are truly saved, born again, of the church of the living God, you are sealed. Okay? Do, do you understand that? Okay? For those of you I have talked to outside here, YouTube, personally, email, phone calls, uh, Skype, stuff like that, okay? I, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little blunt on you on this because you, you, you got to get this through your head. Your sin is not going to keep you out of heaven. Okay? It isn't. It's not. It's not. Okay? Because... We're going to look at Ephesians. I know a lot of you brethren out there um, who have been uh, walking, uh, been saved for a few number of years. Uh, there are babes and those who are, you know, not saved who do watch me. So bear with me, okay? <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1. All right, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, okay? Get you, when, with, in your scriptures, okay, take your pen, circle these verses, underline them, okay? Underline them, do whatever you got to do, get a highlighter, mark these, memorize these, and put them right here, okay? Okay? <clears throat> 
Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. You are sealed until the day of redemption. Eternally secure. You're, okay, you are saved of the church of the living God. You're going to heaven. Stop worrying about that. Okay? And also, I love you. Humble yourself and repent of your pride in thinking that, oh, well, my sins are just that much more bad that the blood of Jesus Christ can't wash that away. Or because even though I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I am trusting on the man, Christ Jesus, even though I came to him as a broken, contrite, repentant sinner, repenting of my self-righteousness and believing on him, even all that, okay, but yet my sins are just that much more, no, that's pride, repent of that. And get that at your head. Okay? Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Especially at this time. That's exactly, if you are of the church of the living God. Okay? Especially at this time. That's what the devil wants you to believe. Okay? Okay? You get it? Now, let's address something else, which is going to be part of the... I'm going to make two videos on this. I'm going to upload this first and then get to the consequences, okay? But there is something we have to address. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 13 under verse 15, okay? First Corinthians chapter three, verses thirteen on to verse fifteen. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Okay? This is talking about rewards in heaven. Okay? This is not talking about salvifically, your eternity, your salvation. This is talking about your rewards in heaven. Prove it to you. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved... Yet so as by fire. And that does not mean purgatory. That means that if you have done works for our Lord that will abide the fire, you will get a reward. If you have done things that are not that are not going to abide the fire, you're not going to get a reward for it. Okay? That doesn't mean purgatory, nonsense, and this doesn't mean that you're going to lose your salvation, okay? You're, you're saved of the church of the living God. You are eternally secure. Get over it, okay? <laughs> you, you, you're saved, born again, Truly of the church of the living God, that's that's one thing you don't have to worry about. Okay? If you're a false convert, on the other hand, that's something else. But if you are truly saved, truly saved, I love you.
Shut up about that. Okay? I, I love you. I love you. Brother, sister, Church of the Living God, those of you who struggle with eternal security, whether or not you're truly saved, even though you came to him as a broken, contrite sinner, okay, and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and have called on him to save you, yes, even though you have done that, okay, I know there are some of you out there that struggle with this. Stop! Stop! Okay? Okay? Stop it. Please. You have bigger fish to fry. But we're, we're not done. Like I said, this is going to be, I'm going to make two videos for this. Okay, I'm going to make this one, then I'm going to do the one on the consequences. Okay, that's it. The, no, no choice. But, okay. Now, go to Colossians. Go to Colossians. Colossians. Chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Verses 1. On to verse 23. Uh, 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 verses 10. On to verse 23. Beg your pardon. Colossians chapter 1, verses 10. On to verse 23. Okay? You saved? Sealed? Born again? Church of the living God? That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Are you increasing in the knowledge of God? How do you do that? Are you reading this book, the authorized version of the scriptures daily? Don't, 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 don't give me no excuses. Don't, don't give the Lord no excuses. Are you increasing in the knowledge of God through the scriptures? Okay, let's continue. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Hath delivered us. Not is delivering us, no, hath delivered us. Definitive. Okay? Get it? Okay, let's continue. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Hath translated us. Definitive. Again, do you get it? In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Yes, even yours. I'm speaking on to the church of the living God, obviously. Okay? Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Modern Bible perversions mess this verse up. So, you know, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Who is that? Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. 
by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet hath Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Now, right there, the if doesn't mean a conditional clause for those of the church of the living God. You shall know them by their fruits. You shall know them by their fruits. Okay? Referencing false converts. Okay? Do you get it? Okay, and Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 under verse 15. Then we'll be done with this video. Wife's going to be home in a little bit. Then I will get to the consequences video. Okay, but Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 under verse 15. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, Catholicism, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. Jesus Christ, the Word, made flesh, the body. One God. One God. Okay? And ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. And that is referencing to you being sealed. Okay? Sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? That circumcision made without hands. The circumcision of Christ is that you are sealed until the day of redemption, that you have the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Please understand that. Let's continue. Buried with Him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God, which hath raised Him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you some trespasses. <clears throat> having forgiven you all trespasses. All. Do a word study one day on your own time on the word all. 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 Past, present, future. That now, see, that doesn't mean that you don't have to confess sins when you commit them. No, no. Again, it points to eternal security. 
but you as the Church of the Living God who follow these twits, these cheap gracers who skip over repentance, uh, contrition, okay, brokenness, and say that repentance is going from belief to unbelief. Brother Alexander, what verse is that in James? Huh? <laughs> I love you, brother. Forgiving you all trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made of them openly. He made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them. Okay? Do you get this? Yes? Yes? Okay? Now that is going to be it for this video. Okay? Like I said, I'm going to make this two parts. Um, this had to be addressed first. And um, in the consequences video that I will be doing, Lord willing, uh, I'm going to put this in the description box, of course, along with um, some um, uh, salvation message one or two. Okay. There are many other scriptures, too, that we could go to for eternal security for today in this dispensation. Okay. But brethren, Church of the Living God, those of you babes in Christ, look, I love you. Um, if you are truly saved and born again, you're going to heaven. Okay? And I'm being a little blunt on you, okay? Because that is one thing, that is the one thing. That's the one thing you don't have to worry about. Okay? You have other things to worry about. But that is not one of them. Okay? And you want to have assurance of salvation? Search the scriptures daily to see whether these things be so. Okay? That's a quote from the book of Acts. Go find it. Okay? So, I love you. Again, if you are truly saved and born again, you're going to heaven. Sin is not going to keep you from heaven. Okay, if you are truly of the church of the living God. But see, your rewards your testimony, all a lot of other things can be affected as a consequence of your actions. Okay? So, I hope this uh, clears it up for some of you. Uh, if you're a babe in Christ, write these down. Okay? Search the scriptures daily to see if these things be so. Please. Because the time is very short. Okay? I love you. See you in the next video.